Hello, everybody. This is Cody Bateman. Welcome to another session of our Relationship Marketing Podcast. Uh, very always excited to do this show. Always excited for all the guests that we have on here. Special thanks and gratitude to everybody that comes on here and serves our uh, business community with your knowledge and your expertise. And boy, do we have an exciting show for you today. Uh, I had the chance to meet uh, this person several years ago, her and her husband, and uh, been a big fan of theirs ever since. Without further ado, I want to introduce Andrea Wall. She is the co-author of Go For No. Now, I know a lot of our listeners know about the Go For No book. Andrea, welcome to our show. Hey, Cody, it is so great to be with you. So we have, thank you. So we, we have uh, our podcast listeners, obviously they listen and they can't see anything, but we also have YouTube folks that will come on and, and watch the show from YouTube. And so those on YouTube can see that you're probably in a home office and you have your go for no book sitting up in the background, which is super cool. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, it's, you know, and I, uh, well, you know, I want to jump right into the show, but I first, I, I got to set you up a little bit. Okay. Um, I was about to jump right into some questions because I'm real excited to question you on some things, but I do want to kind of read through some of your bio if I can for our listeners, just so they can kind of understand a little bit about your background. Andrea Waltz is the co-author of Go For No. Um, I love your little slogan that you have, yes is the destination, no is how you get there. And so obviously that's a big part of your messaging. Uh, along with her husband and business partner, Richard Fenton, she has made her mission to liberate people from fears of failure and rejection, sharing an entire new mindset about hearing the word no. They have spoken all over the U.S. and the U.K. teaching the go for no strategies, having been embraced by people in a wide variety of industries and businesses to rave reviews and amazing results. Andrea's book hit number one on Amazon's selling list and has remained in the top 20 of sales books for over the last eight years. So that alone, I mean, being in the top 20 for eight straight years is very telling. I mean, that's not easy to do. Um, it's, it's, it's a big, huge accomplishment. And again, congratulations to you and your husband for all that you're doing out there. It's just, just super cool. Well, thank you so much. We are, we are very passionate about the message. That's for sure. Now, there's a lot, a lot of other things to share about you, but you know, I could spend the whole show here just giving you the accolades, but let's get, <laughs> let's get into some of the cool stuff. So I'm going to be sh- Straight up with you right out of the gate. So the first, you know, and you had the chance, you came to our corporate headquarters many years ago and you actually interviewed me uh, for, for some of the projects you were working on, which was an honor for me to be able to do. And I don't know if, I, if we had the discussion back then or not, but, but when I was first introduced to the Go For No book and the concept, I, I met with reservation because I'm Mr. Positive. I'm out there talking about positive affirmations. And you always got to have positive words and, and whatever, what that positivity begins a manifestation process. So I struggled. I'm going to be honest. I struggled up front with the whole go for, what do you mean go for no? What, what? I mean, if you go for no, are you not manifesting getting no's? Now we're talking in a sales environment. Your concept is to go for the no's. So I, I was resistant up front. So talk to the people like me. Yes. I mean, what, what, how do you overcome that? Yes, which I love because, um, because I love changing people's minds. <laughs> and, uh-huh. I, and, I, and, and it's fair resistance, honestly, because, you know, you hear go for no and you think, I don't want to hear no, I want to hear yes. And that is why that tagline is so important. Yes is the destination, no is how you get there. I think that the main thing that people have to understand is that we're trying to reprogram the way people think and feel about failure, rejection, and hearing the word no. And so go for no is about intentionally going out and hearing no more often. And when you do that, reaping the benefits of hearing more yeses. So in a way, 
you could say that it's a little bit of a numbers game, but I don't like that phrase because we never want to look at people. People aren't numbers. We never want to make people feel like numbers. We want to build relationships for sure. It's just that you have to have that courage and persistence and tenacity and that willingness to face that no so that eventually those no's um, turn into yeses. And I will tell you, I have heard many, many stories just in my um, meanderings out there online and, and talking to people about people in your business who, you know, they they were persistent and they shared about the um, about the service and they shared, they talked about the business. And sometimes it takes people a long time. You know, they see it and they go like, yeah, it looks interesting. And you've got to stay with people in the long, for the long run. And that's really what Gopher knows about. But I do want to say, and I love that you pointed it out, you know, that manifestation of, of the yes, it's not so much that you're expecting or for for, for sure, hoping, praying, or wishing for a no, but you're accepting. So there's a difference between expecting and accepting and saying, you know what, I accept it, but I want to take the appointment. I want to sit down with this person. I want to show them. And then the answer is what it is. And then I'll continue to build that relationship. And then down the line at some point, it could be a yes. So I remember reading your book years ago, and, and I, one of the things I remember about it was, which was kind of a huge shift for me, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was almost like, it's almost like you're saying, um, well, go for no. It was, you know, so there's a lot of examples in there how, like, you're, you're, you actually want no's, you want to get no's, you, like, it's, so it does take a while to shift your mind to that, Um in fact, you, I, I think you, you even have an expectation of people. When you do your training stuff, you have an expectation that people, people actually know how many no's they're getting. Like you, you, want, you want us to log the no's we get in our prospecting conversation or the sales process. You have a thing where you want, literally want us to log the no's we get. Explain that. Yeah, Ex explain absolutely. that process. Well, so most people are really good with counting the yeses that they get and knowing how many yeses they got today or this week or this month. And we do encourage people to set what we call no goals and to log those no goals in. And I'll give you like a, just a fun example of, of how this mindset shift can happen when you do start really counting your no's. So um, like a common no goal for somebody would be to get 10 no's this week. And instead of worrying about, okay, I want to get two yeses or I want to get four yeses, you just say, I'm going to, I'm going to get 10 people to say, no, I'm not interested this week. And I'll let the yeses happen as they may. And so a good friend of ours um, named Mike, he was, um, it was like Friday afternoon, it was like 5.30, and he had a no goal that week of 10, and he said, I, uh, I, he had nine no's. This is like Friday afternoon, and he thought, you know what, I'm going to hit my no goal of 10. There's a guy that I've been calling on, and I know that this guy, this guy keeps telling me no, so I'm just going to call him, and I'm going to get my no, and then I'm going to have hit my no goal of 10 for that week. So he ends up calling this guy, and the guy, wouldn't you know it, says, Mike, I'm so glad you called me. I've been thinking about you. I'm ready to get started. Sign me up. And uh, he got his yes. So he said, Andrea, I didn't really know how to feel about that because I was excited that, you know, I got the yes. And yet here I was thinking that I would hit my goal of 10 no's. So that I think is that wantingness piece is to say, it's not about avoiding those no's and protecting yourself from that rejection, which is kind of where we've all been taught and trained. It's saying, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have the courage to hear those no's and, and to set those, to, to log those no's and just keep track of them, understanding that the yeses are out there when you, when you do stuff like that, when you track them. That, that was actually, one of the things that helped me to really shift and start to believe in the go for no concept um, was the fact that it, it, it kind of takes the pressure off. Like if you're in a sales environment and you're prospecting and you're trying to get people on the line and you're, you know, you're trying to get things going in the sales process and you know, we, we're so, we hang on sometimes so tight to our outcome. It's like, Oh my goodness, I've got to get three sales this month or I've got to get whatever. I've got to hit my quota, you know, got to hit that quota. So, so you are focused on the yeses, you know, you're totally focused on the yeses and, and the, the focusing on the no kind of takes, not kind of, it really takes the pressure off. So when you're sitting there in a time block, a prospecting time block, and you want to reach 20 prospective clients, 
via phone or however it is you're doing it. And now the goal is to go for no, there, there really is no pressure. And I think that's important. Now, I, I, want, I really want to touch on this and I want to get your input. So my wife, Jody, and I, we, we're kind of going through right now together, we're, we're, we're doing some manifestation exercises. So we're, tr- we're together, we're working on some goals and, and, and a whole manifestation process. So one of the big things that's really come out in that is how important it is to detach yourself from what you're trying to manifest. So it's like, yeah, put it out there that you want to manifest X to come into your life, put that out there. But there's what we're finding and we've taught it for years, but now we're just kind of really doing it together is that there's a really important part to releasing on it. You have to release on it and not put pressure on yourself because that kind of negates the whole manifestation. So how does that relate to the whole go for no, let's call it the psychology of go for no. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Well, because you do want to detach, you want to detach from that outcome and and you really want to focus on the act. And and in the case of go for no, you want to just focus on the activity. And so the activity really is about going out and meeting people and prospecting and sharing what you, what you have and getting to know people and making those connections, starting those relationships, if you will, and detaching from the outcome so that there's no pressure on this person and there's no desperation for, you know, I have to get a yes. And, and one of the things I kind of joke about is that, you know, the go for yes salesperson, which you think like, oh yeah, that, I want to be a go for yes salesperson, but the go for yes salesperson is the one that's like, what do I have to do to get you in this car today? Like, I'm going to get you in, this is going to happen, right. whether it's good for you or not, I'm going to twist your arm. And, and the go for no salesperson says, I want to go out there, I want to tell my story to as many people as I can, as fast as I can, I want to, I want to let them hear this story. And then I want to let them decide for themselves. And if it's a no, no problem. And, but I'm going to continue to, to follow up with them if there's, you know, a little crack in that doorway, which there usually is. And if it's a yes, great. But either way, what my mission is, is to tell my story. And so we focus on that mission. So kind of like what you're saying is you, you put it out there and then you just stand back and say, it's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. Um, but you get into action and that's the key. Really good stuff. So this, this show here is about relationships. It's uh, relationship marketing. And uh, that's been a great uh, coin phrase for us for many years. Uh, I have a, a book out called The Power of Human Connection, how relationship marketing is transforming the way people succeed. And so we talk a lot about the importance today of building relationships versus building sales. A lot of our guests that have been on this show talk about the sales process in a much different way it used to be. Traditional sales was go for yes. Traditional mm-hmm. sales was hard close, man. Get them on the phone, going through the process. Like you said, how do I get you in the car today? Let's do it right now. And those days are kind of over. You know, it's, it's people, you know, we talk a lot on this show about how people know People know about your product and service way before they even talk to you now with the information age the way it is. So relationship is becoming more and more and more important. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, you know, so you're going through the sales process. A a lot of our guests that have been on the call and a lot of the stories that we feature in the book talk about the sales process now is about gathering information and creating relationship. it's about assessment. Um, so how does that relate today? So you say go for no. And today's day and age, there's a lot of discussion, which I love, about, uh, uh, for lack of better terms, say go for the assessment. You know. Yeah. So what's the difference between assessing somebody's needs versus going for no? Yeah. Well, so... See, this is a new book. That's a new book for you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Go for, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I think about for any business, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the businesses, because we all ultimately are kind of doing the same thing. We have products and services that we want to share, and ultimately we want people to buy those things. Um, but the way that those things unfold happens differently. And so you're talking about assessment here, and I like that. And I think that 
Um, there are go for no moments, what I, what I call go for no moments in every business. And so for, for this, in this case, the first piece, the first go for no moment is really how do I get myself in front of someone or on the phone or over text, whatever the tool is, it doesn't matter, so that I can begin this assessment process. So that's the first go for no moment. And it requires that courage to ask and to make the invitation to somebody to say, hey, I, I wanna um, see if I can maybe help you in your business. I wanna ask you a few questions, see if maybe I have a solution for you. So that's that go for no moment. And then what happens is when we make the assessment and we say, gosh, this, this is going to be perfect for this person. I need to take the next step. And so the next go for no moment may, may be something like, man, after everything you've just described, um, this service is going to be, this service would be ideal. And here's why, and here's why I think you should do it and be an advocate for that service. So that, so that person understands that, you know, this is like the closing part and there's nothing wrong with that. You have to be an advocate sometimes because people oftentimes are just scared to change. They don't want to take that step. They're, they're a little nervous. Will this work? Is this, is this cool? I don't know. And so that's another go for no moment. Then there's other go for no moments throughout, like, um, maybe somebody's happy, it's 30 days later, and you follow up with them and you're like, hey, how's it going? Do you know, you know, who, who are the couple people that you can think of right off the bat who would love to be using this service like you are? And another go for no moment. So I break it down into go for no moments and say, if every time you have that little bit of nervousness or anxiety, like, okay, here it comes, I have to ask this person a yes or no question, that's the moment where you have to have the courage to ask. Wow, that's really good. So going for no is really part of the assessment, you know, and assessing people's needs. And you want them to, to say, you know, no, I don't, I really don't need your service. And so it's like, okay, so that's great. Help me understand your business better. And, and again, a lot of what we talk about is, is people need, people don't, people don't want to work with you until they know that you care about them. You know, they don't, they, it, they don't, it's, it's not how much, you know, it's how much you care that, that means something to somebody, especially today in the relationship age that we have. Now you're, you and your husband, you guys, you, I mean, you're experts at creating relationship. That's one of the reasons I think that your book has been so successful is that you're really good at maintaining and, and building relationships with people. So, Tell us a little bit about, you know, you have a training company, you, you're an author, you, you do, you've got a lot of services that you offer. Um, what kind of things do you do to create relationship and to nourish relationship in your business? Mm, that's a great question. Well, you know, what I found from my standpoint is I... I'm very clear about, and, and as entrepreneurs, and I think people listening or watching this can relate, where we love to do a bunch of different things, right? We, we, so Richard and I have expanded and, and we've got our hands in different, different businesses, but, um, and different things, publishing being one of them that we just started. But when it comes to building relationships and, and helping people with that, I, I'm like rooted in a purpose of the thing that about go for no that I love is keeping people um, in momentum, keeping people in action without letting that fear of that failure, that fear of no or fear of rejection get in their way. So from that standpoint, I pretty much wake up every day and say, how can I do that, right? And how can I do that and help people every day? And when I do that, that builds um, our relationships with people who have maybe read our book or maybe seen us speak. So for me, it's um, creating that daily motivation for people and that daily encouragement. And, and also, um, the other thing is just being, uh, I think, engaged with people, like, for example, on social media and, and all of the tools that we have. Um, I'm a big, big believer in that and a big believer in taking connections offline, um, getting in person. So I think it all works hand in hand. But for the, the key, Cody, for me is you have to know your purpose. You have to know when you wake up, you've got to be excited about how, what, what do I want to accomplish? And then it's, then it's, I think, a lot easier. 
So you mentioned social media. Let's 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 talk about that. You're you're actually uh, what I guess we would call an influencer on social media. You've got I don't know your numbers are crazy. You got like thirty thousand followers on Facebook and all this kind of stuff. So what kind of what kind of things do you do to create such a big following? Everybody's interested in that today. Mm, um, for I think the absolute biggest thing is you've got to be out there listening. It's not about just being out there and talking, talking, talking. I, I purposely go out and I listen to, I find people with good news and I love people with good news and to, to congratulate them. I love connecting with people. Um, I don't think that it, whatever platform you're on, if you see somebody who, who's posted something, don't just like it comment. I mean, it is really about taking it to the next level and really engaging. And, and, um, I think that is what builds relationships. So it is putting out good content, but the talking is just like one third. It's two thirds listening. You've got to pay attention to what people are saying. You've got to care about that. And when you reply to whether it's a tweet or Facebook or whatever, those are those little tiny connections and you build on that. So, um, and also, I mean, from like even the Facebook page that you mentioned, the 30,000 fans or whatever, that is the talking part. But I try to, if somebody posts a comment, I respond to every comment. I respond to it personally. I just, I just have taken it very, very seriously. Um, and that has paid off. Okay, so I need you to help me out with something. I've actually asked this uh, uh, with some of our listeners before. One of the things in my personal development journey, and you know, I'm a student of personal development and a teacher of personal development, and um, I'm finding that I'm the older I get, the more I realize there's there's a lot more I need to learn. <laughs> like I think I'm this teacher, but I actually need to learn a lot more than I need to teach. So. Um, but here's here, one of the things that's real important in, in my personal development journey right now is the importance of being present. Today's day and age, we've got smartphones in our hands. We got our you know young generation coming up that they've been born and raised on that. They live on their phones. They live on their screens. Um, and and right now in my life, uh, and Jody and I both, you know, we we really really see the value of being present with people m literally more than anything else and to me this is my own struggle my own struggle is how do I do that how do I be present in the moment not only with people but with with places you're at you know basically are you smelling the flowers as you walk by versus are you you know on your smartphone making a, a comment to somebody's comment um, how do you deal with that? I mean, because I need help with that because I get to the point, I get so frustrated that I don't, I don't even want my phone around. I just want to put it away somewhere so that I can go be in the moment. So how do, how do you help me out? How do, we, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that is a good question. You, listen, you are not alone. I think we are all going through this together, figuring out how do you have a, it's almost like we got an extra life added to our lives, right? We got this extra, here we are living our lives, and then you get this little device, and it puts your whole life onto a platform that's running simultaneously to your in-present life, but it's online, and so now you're living two lives, and it's we didn't have time before living the one life. Now we're living two, two lives, trying to figure this out on the same track simultaneously as we go. So I, I agree with you. I am, I am a big fan of being present as well. And I have learned that, and I've learned this the hard way because there's been times where Richard has come in to tell me something and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not listening. And I'm on my phone. And I realize, <laughs> I realize you can't multitask with another human being. It's just not right. So you have to choose right. to put it down and choose to put it down and choose to listen and be present. And, um, and it's tough. I, I squeeze in literally my social media in every nook and cranny I can find that doesn't matter. You know, if, if I'm standing in line at the post office or I'm at the grocery store, I jump on and I'm like, what, what can I accomplish in five minutes? Um, strategic, right? St strategically. And then 
I, I, if I'm cooking dinner and it's our time and I'm cooking dinner and we're going to watch a Netflix show or whatever, phone is gone. Like just the phone is gone for a few hours and it's just not that time. So you're not alone though. This is a, this is a fascinating struggle for all of us. Yeah. One of the ways that, you know, and this has been advice that I've gotten from other people and whatever, and things I've kind of tried to learn myself. One of the things that works for me in other areas, like, you know, people ask me all the time, well, Cody, how do you have time to write a book when you're running a company? And how do you have time? And I'm a big proponent of time blocking. So I really believe in time blocking where, hey, if you're going to spend an hour, the only way that the only way that you get really good at exercise is you have to time block your time to exercise. Now, there's a time that you go exercise, time to go to the gym, whatever. And there's that one hour a day or whatever that you go to the gym. If you don't time block that, it ain't going to happen. So I always use the analogy of, of going to the gym because that is a true time blocking thing that, that a lot of us do. And the same thing for everything else. You know, in the sales process, the number one problem that people have is they don't have enough people in their pipeline. So, and the number one thing people don't want to do in the sales process is they don't want a prospect. They don't want to go for yeses because they don't get yeses. Now, if they start going for no's, maybe they will want to prospect more. I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of part of your message. But yeah. you got to time block prospecting. You know, you got to time block the prospecting as an important tool. So I started thinking, well, why not time block my social media efforts? Why not say, okay, I'm going to take an hour a day or whatever. And that's when I'm going to post and comment and like and share on, on social media. What do you think of that strategy? Because part of the problem I'm seeing with doing that, it works for me, but part of the problem is I'm not commenting very quickly on some people's stuff because I'm only commenting one hour a day. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, social media is a timely medium. It's a, things are, are, are timely. And so I would almost, uh, and I agree with you on the time blocking. I, in my head, I call it batching. And so um, I almost like doing 15 minute intervals to where you don't just get kind of worn down and, and ground down by it, but it's jumping on maybe one platform um, for 15 minutes and then maybe jumping on again for another 15 minutes. And I think, Cody, a couple things that like you just brought to the surface for me though, is one is you really have to choose, you really have to make hard choices about what you're gonna put your time and energy in. And I think also there's this thing that we do to ourselves, which is, I've got, it's, it's the, I've got to, I've got to be here. I've got to be there. Pick a couple platforms that you love. And if there's something that you don't like, don't do it just because, uh, because if it's not done well, honestly, you might as well not do it at all. So do a couple things, pick the things that you really like and do them with excellence and do them consistently. Uh, and it's the same thing with go for no blocking. Um, you know, your, I call it your go for no time. It's process. It's, basically prospecting. And it's, I would rather see somebody prospect 15 minutes every single day rather than do what we typically, um, and I, I have a Facebook coaching group that I kind of admonish people on this and say, you can't store up 30 days of prospecting and try to get it done in all, one day in a 10 hour time frame because you won't do it. You're not going to be able to pull it off. You're better off doing something consistently a little bit. I'm sure you agree a little bit every single day. Yeah, no question. Really good stuff. One of the things I just got out of that is, you know, maybe I need to shift a little bit to maybe 10 or 15 minute time blocks instead of one hour time blocks for social media that might help me. Um, and maybe schedule four or five of those a day. Mm -hmm. I think I, I could probably make it work in that way. Um, I mean, I've gotten to the point now where I'll literally because the, the, the challenge with the smartphone is you it's it interrupts you. Like it's, there's constant interruption and sometimes that interruption is not very positive. I mean, sometimes there's, you know, people, they, they revert to negative things on social media because negativity sadly draws people in and it creates more viewership, which I think is really sad. And, and so you end up getting exposed to negativity. So one of the things I've done is I, I, I love my uh, airplane mode on my phone. I click airplane mode all the time. It's like, I don't want to hear noise at a certain time. You know, when I'm ready to see what's coming in on the phone, I'll click, click it so that I can do that. 
So I, I, I like that. Maybe I'll go more to 10 to 15 minute time blocks, four or five times a day. Cause I've got to be, I have to be better at it. You know, I've, and here's another thing. I have people that do social media for me and that doesn't always work. And I'm sure, you know, you, you, you've already said you kind of do your own thing and you've got 30,000 viewers and I don't. So, <laughs> so I need to pay attention a little bit more to what you're doing. So anyway, good stuff. I'm um, also not know, running a multi-million dollar company like you, but <laughs> multi, yeah. multi, multi. <laughs> so I think you get yeah. a little yeah well thank you it's it's all relative it's it's crazy i was i it was i was joking with my assistant the other day i was kind of like um you know, i was kind of like saying uh yeah there's nobody there's, there's, are people not interested in what i want to say anymore and she's like cody you got to get on and you got to make your comments and you got to <laughs> like dang it so i gotta go do that stuff anyway i'm an old schooler i just it'd take me a little while to learn so um you guys talk a lot about uh, i mean you 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 not only do the go for no and the whole sales thing you do a lot of personal development teaching yourself uh, and you guys do some great work on um overcoming fear and overcoming rejection in life not just in a sales process but in life and i love how you guys do that can you kind of just take a couple minutes and talk to us that have fears and that we fear rejection and even in our personal life you know what kind of things should we focus on to, to, to overcome that yeah well i love talking about this the subject because it's just so personal to me when i um first learned go for no from richard um, I actually thought I was a superstar salesperson, that I was fantastic, and then I had to get honest with myself and realize I didn't like hearing the word no, primarily because I did have a fear of rejection, and I had a kind of perfectionistic tendency going on, which means um, I wanted people to like me, uh, almost in a pathological way. I wanted people to like me, and I saw that if I was rejected, that, oh, that means that people won't like me and they'll, I don't, I don't want to look like that pushy, aggressive salesperson. So you have that from a business perspective. And if your business kind of bleeds over into your personal life a little, you can end up having issues with friends or family or what have you. And so this, these fears um, are, are big. And I think a lot of it has to do with taking things personally. And so I've done a lot of work on myself over the years with that. One of my favorite books is a book called The Four Agreements. One of the four agreements is not to take things personally. And it's really to embrace people's um, choices. And I have some of the work that I've done is really to embrace and learn to love the fact that somebody is saying no. Learn to love somebody's different choice or different opinion rather than see it as this um, cut into our armor that we are somehow now injured. We've got we've to gotta almost understand where they're coming from just like, and, and so the funny analogy I give you about this, about these fears, especially taking it personally, because I think this is a big one, um, and also fear of failure, um, is that if you and I are walking down the street and we saw a woman coming down the street in a white dress covered with bright red cherries, and I said, oh my gosh, she looks ridiculous. That's that, And I told her, I said, that dress looks horrible. And you said, that dress is fabulous. I think she looks beautiful. Well, the question is, if she got both of those things from, from me and, and from you, who should she believe, right? And we tend to believe the negative. We tend to just discount the positive. What we have to understand is that wherever you're coming from, you just like that dress. I'm coming from it from some place, from my own beliefs and experience, and, and that's about me. Point is, both of us have those opinions because it's really about us, has nothing to do with her. She's just walking down the street in this dress. We, uh, the sooner that we can work on this and practice this, and I, I feel like it's really a skill to build your, I guess, your um, understanding of, of, of this um, will help you when you go out, whether it's personal, whether it's business, um, you just learn to almost love these differences and they just kind of slide right off you. Um, and I think that has, I think that makes a big difference towards fear. And then also fear of failure, which is a huge thing with go for no, fear of the word no. And we, we, that's why in the book, we dig down into failure and we say, hey, 
you got to let give yourself permission to fail this especially for people who are just starting out in business you know you're you, you can't expect perfection you're going to make mistakes you're going to fail um, and it's going to be ugly and you've got to give yourself permission to do that rather than expect perfection that you're going to go out it's going to be gangbusters and if it's not in the first 30 days then you're going to hang it up and quit no you got to expect some failures you got to roll with those and keep going well that Again, that goes right all the way back to your go for no concept. I think that fits in beautifully with that philosophy you just shared. You know, you just roll with the flow and roll with the flow, go for no. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's very, very powerful stuff. So you've, you've uh, how do we, how do, how do our listeners find you guys? I mean, uh, you've got all kinds of, of places where you're at. Can you just share with us a little bit of where we could go uh, learn more from, from you guys? Yeah, thanks for asking. Our website is gofornow.com, and that's the word spelled out, so G-O-F-O-R-N-O.com. And we, uh, nobody had taken Go For No on any of the social media stuff, so we own the Go For No on Twitter, and we're Go For No on Facebook, and we're Go For No on Instagram. So so from that standpoint, we're well branded. So on whatever, yeah. whatever you know, platform you want to, I I love hearing from people and love uh, connecting with people. So by all means, reach out to me. Let's talk about branding just for a second because you, you're excellent at it. I mean, obviously, go for no, and you just gave us examples of how you brand yourself with the the unique words go for no. But you have a really cool slogan too. Um, share with us what the slogan is again. I mentioned it at the first of the show, but what, what is, cause in your slogan, which is one sentence really kind of depicts your entire philosophy, which I think is powerful. So, so share that. What, what is the slogan? Yeah. Yes. Is the destination. No is how you get there. So let's, let's talk about branding. So go for no. Yes. Is the destination. No is how you get there. So literally within less than seven seconds, I kind of get it. Like I get it. I get it. Like I get what you guys are. <laughs> That's powerful branding. That is powerful branding. So talk to us a little bit about branding. we got a lot of, of, of entrepreneurs that listen in here. They're trying to get their start on things. Uh, branding obviously is key. Um, yeah. What would you recommend to people to get a solid branding going for themselves? Well, I think your first your first decision has to be, um, and I don't know if we've done it right or wrong. Uh, we've done it the way we've done it, and I am no branding expert. I, we've had some happy accidents. <laughs> we've gotten yeah. we've had some good, some some luck, right? Gets involved. Um, and for us, though, is it's not as hasn't been as important for people to know my name. Um, in fact, a lot of people don't know my name. They don't know Richard's name. We're known oftentimes as the go for no people. Even if right. somebody wants to have a speech, like get the, call the go for no people. They don't, they have no idea who we are. Right. And so, um, <laughs> which to me is fine. I, I actually, my, that brand is more important. So I think, um, really figuring out what that, what your message is and are you branding yourself as a particular expert for a particular group of people? Are you branding? Do you want to go out with a message? And if you do, you have to understand that that message might overtake your name and that you want to stick with that message for pretty much ever. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to, I have now well branded myself so well that I will be, we will forever be known as the go for no people. I mean, right. changing that now is almost impossible. So we've painted ourselves in a corner again, good and bad. I think that's a really important distinction as are you message focused? Are you your individual? Is it your name and about who you are and what you do? Uh, and then go from there in terms of the, the brand. Every person, I think, has a brand to some extent. It is kind of how you operate with people. Are you known for being funny? Are you known for being serious? Are you known for being a goofball, right? You bring that to the party and that all um, goes to your individual brand and you can capitalize on that as well. Uh, but that message versus person, I think, is the first, the first big question. Now, you and Richard are going to be featured at the Outbound Conference coming up. Is that right? In April? Are you going to be speaking there? Or? I am speaking there, yes. Okay. I am speaking there. And just, just me, not Richard, because um, as, I, as he likes to joke, I've hijacked this brand from him. 
<laughs> well, that's great. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Outbound Conference. I know we've got a lot of people that are going there. I certainly recommend people go to the Outbound Conference to learn the sales process and hear people like yourself, you know, great trainers and teachers will be there. So when is it and what, what, how do we get there? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be amazing. So it's April 24th and 25th in Atlanta, um, downtown at the Congress, I think it's called Congress Dome. Um, there is going to be 20 of the greatest sales trainers. I, I honestly still can't even believe I get to go to this thing. Um, yeah. I'm so honored and excited. Um, Jeffrey Gittimer, who's the author of The Little Red Book of Selling, is going to be speaking. Um, the four guys who started Outbound, um, Jeb Blount's one of them, and he wrote a book called Fanatical Prospecting and a book called yep. Objections, both great books. Uh, the um, Bob Berg, The Go-Giver, the, the author of The Go-Giver, yep. is a phenomenal speaker. Yep. Is going to be here. So there's going to be so many, uh, so much learning, and they're going to really keep it keep it fast paced and, uh, you know, short talks and, and very, um, very mix it up quite a bit. So it's going to be really, really amazing. I'm, I cannot wait. Okay. So I'm going to go for no right now. I'm going to do a go for no right now. So, um, we have our national convention, August 7th through the 10th, Salt Lake city, Utah, and we're doing something special this year because one of those days, August 9th, we're going to have what we call the Relationship Marketing Grand Summit. And it's going to be similar to the Outbound Conference where we have lots of speakers come in. Uh, there'll be, some of the speakers will be some of our own referral partners that we have and send out cards. Many of our speakers will be like you who are top selling authors and speakers on the subject of sales and marketing and talk on the subject of relationship marketing. That's on August 9th. So, um, Andrew, we need you to come speak there this <laughs> night. What do you think of that? Okay. <laughs> um, I, this is a true go, this is a classic go for no moment that you just executed <laughs> on me, Cody. Um, the answer yeah. is I know that I have something going that weekend and yeah. I don't know how long it's going that weekend. So the answer is, is what we don't like in sales, which is a maybe. So um, yeah. <laughs> a maybe requires follow-up. So I will follow up with you on this. All right. Well, we're not afraid of Zoom. We're certainly not afraid of Zoom. We're not afraid to bring people in and, and uh, have them speak on the big screen or whatever. There's always things that we could work out. Okay. Because uh, we just, we just, we love you guys. We love your message. We just think it'd be great. We'd like to promote your book there. Um, I just think it's really important that all of us band together in today's day and age and, and help others to stay positive, to create relationships, to loosen the grip on our outcome, uh, which is part of the manifestation process. And your whole message and branding of go for no just, just fits right into that. That's awesome. So, well, I appreciate being yeah, asked. This, and I, that, that yeah, I do. Sure. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll work it out. You'll yeah, be we will. There. We'll figure okay. it out. So. Okay. All right. So uh, in closing, uh, I always like to do this is uh, just I, I'd like to give you the floor. I mean, typically in, in the podcast, it's like an interview format and you're kind of at the mercy of whatever I ask you or what the conversation is. So I always like to end by just giving you the floor, like anything that you want to share, want to talk about uh, final message for our view, viewers today. Go ahead. Absolutely. OK, fun. So my final message is if you like what you've heard and you're wondering, well, how do I, how do, I do this in my life? Um, I feel like go for no is a life philosophy. It's not just a, I mean, it is definitely a sales philosophy, but it's a life philosophy as well. So I would encourage everybody to just practice building your courage and to go out and start asking. Ask, ask at any point that there's that opportunity. And so look for those go for no moments. Have those just serendipitous things where maybe you're at the grocery store and you know you ask the, the person behind the deli counter for a free slice of cheese or you check into a hotel and you ask for an upgrade or you are at a restaurant and you get seated in a horrible seat and you want to sit at the cool table you know in the front window with the rose you know there's that cute table and you get set by the water station i say just Practice asking because when you get in the habit of it and you will get turned down and you'll get no and you'll get surprised, surprising yeses that you didn't expect. That is how you build that courage muscle and that is how you get better at asking 
in life and in your business. So those are my closing words for everybody. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I'll tell you, it's just, it's, it's an honor. It's really an honor to have you on with us. Uh, so there you have it, everybody. Andrea Waltz, um, go for no. And we appreciate uh, the message that you have. Um, we encourage all of our listeners, share this. I mean, share this wonderful message with other people through social media and whatnot. Uh, get them over to this podcast so that they can learn from Andrea. And thanks, everybody. We'll see you on another version of our Relationship Marketing Podcast here in the very near future. Take care now. We'll see you all. If you have enjoyed this episode of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B, be sure to subscribe to the show and leave a review so that together we can get this message, The Power of Human Connection, out to the world. You can find Cody's new book, The Power of Human Connection, on Amazon or the Send Out Cards gift store.